Hello, welcome for another Café Rollist. As usual, I like to cross borders as much as possible, and I got a great opportunity to do so with CyberConf, a French speaking online convention which is coming. But I've got two tabletop RPG fans who are fluent in English today, I hope, uh, because they're, all, they're both from Canada. Hello, uh, Mark, could you introduce yourself to our viewers, please? Hi, my name is Manon Kumark. I am part of the Les Aventureux podcast, which is a uh, RPG, tabletop RPG podcast that has been uh, there for about five years. Uh, I'm also on my part, on my own, uh, a streamer and a podcaster. Um, so I do things on my own private channel as well. And, well, that's about it. I'm also going to be at the Cyberconf, mostly on the broadcasting part of it. Broadcasting as technical, or are you part of the Radio Libre, as I will? You know what? Both. <laughs> And that's the fun about it. <laughs> Dragon, could you introduce yourself, please? So, yes, um, I'm Dragon Ervish. I played the uh, RPG nearly since 2005 after I finished the uh, high school. So, I'm not really a streamer, and I don't usually uh, take time to just uh, do OBS. And I'm not the guy that, yeah, I will just uh, make all the, the income tax that. Uh, it's related to streaming and other stuff that may just make my work harder as an accountant and with the government. So I'm not really streaming. I'm listening sometimes some podcasts and some uh, streamer. Uh, I usually do uh, some RPG uh, in some Discord uh, channel, but I'm not usually uh, online. So. Great. Well, you're not you're not like uh, me and Mark to some extent, desperate to no. monetize your private life in some fashion. No. no. So we we gotta. Oh, uh, go well, if I may introduce a little bit. Well, not, not introduce, but if I may interject you on that. Uh, if you guys at home, you think that kind of uh, podcasting, broadcasting, whatever, streaming, it makes a lot of money. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> I've been in there for five years. I haven't made a cent. I'm not kidding. I do a bit more. I, I've got. I'm. I'm very thankful for the. I believe it's twenty four dollars at the moment per month for everything I do, uh, which technically oh. amounts for an hour of my work uh, when I'm working. So I'm an employee at the moment. So it's definitely well, better uh... than nothing. That's about 20 more uh, dollars or pounds more than me. So <laughs> that's good for you. <laughs> I mean, in in pound, I is up in USA dollar or in US dollars <laughs> in US, pound. US dollars. Okay. So yeah, the, the conversions, the conversion rate is better than it used to be, which is not good news for me anyway. But uh, <laughs> it's still quite bad. <laughs> But you know, it's, yeah. it shows it shows interest. You know, it really encourages me every month knowing there are a few people who still think it's worth that. Uh, it helps me motivate myself when I need to edit and so on. You know, sometimes, sometimes you had a hard day and you're like, oh, I could just sleep, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> much earlier. But this way, uh, I'm back on Audacity uh, doing things. Uh, what was I about to say? Yeah, we got an ice-breaking question uh, on this spin-off of my main show, which happened because of COVID, uh, because I was in lockdown, like many people. Uh, what's your routine like uh, at the moment, Mark? Is it is it different than it used to be before COVID, or what? What is it like? You wake up in the morning when you are you're not meeting a weird London-based streamer for an interview. Um, well, actually, because um, I, I have some kind of a particular life, um, for about 10 years now, I've been, uh, well, 10 years ago, should I say, uh, I was declared invalid uh, for many reasons, uh, some of them physical, um, and uh, I don't have a job anymore, so... 
being stuck at home, for me, that was typical Tuesday. And when they say, okay, you're all going to stay at home, do nothing, everyone was going crazy. They didn't know what to do. I was like, guys, just ask me what to do. <laughs> this is my everyday life. I don't mind. So uh, did it? Did my life change since the start of the COVID-19 or the confinements? Not really. Uh, or should I say that it changed a bit? Because there's so many people now that are stuck at home as well that I have something like a game a day. I'm not kidding. When I say game, it's a tabletop RPG game, full-fledged campaign on Roll20 and Discord. Uh, so it, it's not what I do more, what I do less. Because before the, the confinements, I was doing a lot of streaming on, on, Twi on many platforms, uh, gaming, a lot of gaming too. And that just went away. I think I've had time to play a computer game maybe twice in the last month. Well, that's, that's more than me. I mean, I mean, that's not true. I'm playing Mario Kart. <laughs> Every two days oh, well. with my wife, so we we got uh, when she, she's working from home. I'm also unemployed uh, at the moment. Well, since the end of January, uh, so oh. so yeah, life is uh, is I, I devoting myself a bit more to to game design. Uh, before we go to you, Dragon, uh, regarding what you said, if it's not uh, uh, intrusive of a question, I was wondering. Do you find the situation sort of develop a bit more empathy towards people who are stuck home for for physical reason or mental reasons? Uh, what's happening right now? Is there a bit more of understanding regarding people with disabilities being stuck home, Mark? Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't think it has. Uh, people with disabilities have been on the news so much. Uh, they've talked. They've talked more about the. Uh, the elderly, uh, the elderly here, particularly in Quebec, there's been a big crisis uh, of, um, of COVID-19 in the uh, elderly centers. Um, and they did not particularly uh, got that well, uh, talking about the government. Um, for physical and handicapped people, to tell you the truth, I don't know. I really don't know, and I'm kind of concerned because I I worked uh, before I was um, called invalid or I was invalid. I I worked for five years in a in a handicap center where I was a um, uh, I'm searching for the the, the term uh, accompagnateur in English. I my brain is farting right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I know so things uh, can be uh, switching from one language to another. Uh, I, I guess I would be a assistant. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I was some kind of a I, I was some kind of a personal assistant to uh, one or two uh, handicap uh, people that was there. Uh, so I I know what kind of life they they can be they they can live. Uh, they they had this kind of it, it was kind of a school for adults but it was more like a place to socialize for them and i i'm uh, right now like to be confined those people like they're probably not well and to tell you the truth i can't wait for this crisis to to go away because those kind of people, they, they need to be together. They need to uh, to have a social life. And um, I, I was giving them as well some knowledge about computers because in one of my past um, um, employment, I was a I was on a technical help desk for uh, for a company here, an internet company. So I, I know a bit about computers and I was teaching them the basic skills on the computers, you know, just how to use words, how to use a keyboard and uh, how to use a browser, you know, 
not and for for some <laughs> for, for some cases like don't go search for porn let's say into the school area you know it's it was as simple as that but it's yeah. it, it's i don't know it, it just to think about that time it makes me a bit um nostalgic and worried about how they are right now yeah let's hope things I, settle by easter i guess that's the most i do optimistic. i do hope that uh things have been put in place for them to have some kind of a social life online yeah for my part uh like i i do like they're there i was already on discord and all the social media so that was no problem for me uh it, it was a problem when i uh, i was calling my parents let's say because they live in a very um we don't live in the same area in the province of quebec they live in a very remote area where there's there's not even the internet in their house and when i was calling them the the the, the phoning system was kind of failing and i was quite worried i still is and i i can't wait for this to go away just to like dates yeah well crossing fingers uh what about you dragon now uh, was it like being a, a remote accountant uh, i guess that that's your situation i i never really work at that accountant so i have too many uh diploma but oh, sorry. i don't use it at least currently reading art history book is at least one of the thing that when you got at least a bad shoulder degree on this field is you don't feel bad when you read a book about art history is okay i have a diploma if i went to know more about carpentry artists i should just read more even if sometimes i just went to look at this click and wait for some of my play by post game that if someone will update something that the problem when you don't have a job at the moment is man when i i just stuck at looking at the screen when i should not i should just read one book completely from cov the front cover to the back cover but uh, in fact here in quebec we technically have two phase uh, two phase where we technically we the second one is not really a lockdown since we don't close a shopping mall i don't know why but on spring uh, nearly on friday the 13th march so yeah friday in March, uh, it was, and the day after we just this the the government decide to uh, put the emergency state from Quebec and the other province in Canada just follow the day, some day after or the day after. So they decide to close business uh, restaurant. Uh, may, they don't close for restaurant to that to take out, but yeah for the spring uh, we did not know when we would come back during summer i just go back to work and uh, and it we just shut down i technically shut down again on october the first but the announcement was someday i before that so currently sometime i just got a job interview like how i feel currently but not in english but in french so sometimes it just in english it's just what can i say but that does that does that does make sense for a job interview mm -mm. yeah i got four job applications which are live at the moment so i'm waiting for answer for that it's job hunting it's it's frustrating anyway on going on more joyful <laughs> things <laughs> And going into uh, things which bring yes. us together when we are lucky to find our way around a uh, electronic device, CyberConf is coming, which I believe is a, it's my favorite convention. It's the best convention online I attended so far. 
and I'm sort of frustrated that it's not in English. So I don't sh can I cannot share it with most of my friends. But uh, here we are. Uh, how did you ended up? Uh, first of all, did you participate in the first CyberConf uh, drag Dragon? Yes, I did run a game of Pathfinder Second Edition. I listening sometime for the Twitch. I was in the actual play of the game that is uh, a l'intérieur de l'auberge. Uh, if Mac can correct me if it was the right title of the RPG name. Uh, it was. Um, uh, il était une fois dans une auberge. You, you meet which is a thing. which is a yeah a tabletop RPG game that was made by a Quebecer, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it's the, Domas, yeah. the English title is uh, You Are in an Inn. I think that's because I googled it uh, at a while. I'm, I'm designing a game which is sort of the opposite. So You Are in an Inn, sort of. The game, everything happens at the inn where you meet at the beginning, you meet in a yeah. tavern. While I'm designing a game which starts at the end of the story when you defeated the, the dungeon. For real? The very, that's the very end of the dungeon. So when I heard about it, I was like, I should check it out because. They, they couldn't be mm. nice bookends uh, for uh, for a library. Uh, what about you, Mark? Uh, what did you do uh, as part of the first one? Uh, well, in the first uh, CyberConv, uh, when it was organized, uh, they they were they were all okay on the the French time zone uh, <laughs> part of it, but then they were like, "Hey, could we go twenty four seven? But like no one wanted to be there in the night shift, and <laughs> well, for those of you who played World of Warcraft, <laughs> uh, you know that. Um, well, uh, it, it might be even be the same for uh, for our English uh, viewers because you might have played with Americans too. It's the same for for us French speaking uh, players. There are French people. What what is the night shift about? Well, it's Quebec people, of course. <laughs> it's Americans because yes, in a way, we're Americans. It's the continent, you know. It's not the country. It, so it, bring, it brings back flashbacks to me of uh, I didn't play that many uh, MMORPGs, but I did play one called Dark Age of Camelot, and it was <laughs> we had a French server, and it was like that. But oh, <laughs> that's a Quebec shift. Okay, it's, yeah, it's time for me it. to go to bed. See you in the morning, and then in the morning you you find out what they conquered, what we lost, <laughs> this sort of stuff. And because uh, Les Aventureux, uh, the, our podcast, uh, did before a lot of co collaboration uh, with uh, a lot of people uh, in the staff. Um, uh, I know I played some games with Samuel Sterman. Uh, I've uh, I've been played for a while with uh, Cecil, who's not in the in the staff, but she knows a lot of people, and they were all like, "Hey, why not contact Les Aventureux, and we'll see from there?" Because we don't know anyone else in in Quebec who are uh, uh, role playing uh, role players. Uh, so they contacted us, and from that part. Uh, we we just like yeah we want to do that in the night shift why not and at first I I don't know where to go uh, but because I was the one who was in charge of the of the streaming uh, with les aventures uh, I I I proposed uh, my 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 services for that. Uh, and from then, uh, well, they even got me a, a segment uh, where I, I spoke about um, RPG a week, which is something that we, uh, we do. We, it began here with one of our uh, aventures, uh, which is a kind of an answer to RP, RPG a day. Maybe you, oh, you, you know said that in English. Yeah, you said a week, yes. and and I thought a day because yeah, uh, autocratic is a uh, has been on the show a couple of times. So I was like, wait, what is he? Oh yeah, okay, it's a week, not a day. Yeah, because two years ago we were uh, we were part participating to the RPG a day, and we were like, we don't want that to only 
like be in August. We want to have we want to pursue this kind of I don't know feedback or ping pong between uh, between role players, and we we wanted to. But anyway, that's another story. But for a part of it, uh, like I. I was there. I, I made some shows. Uh, I had a lot of fun, a ton of fun. I didn't play a single game outside <laughs> of the actual play that I, um, because I, even at first, like everyone was like, okay, no actual plays, only uh, panels. Oh, really? Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it was uh, like in, in if you go back on the old videos on the on the French shift, there are no actual plays. Actually, They're, the only actual plays are on the Quebec side, uh, and we've done two, I think, or three. Uh, three actually, if we count the one that was in the after Cybercombe, <laughs> um, and one of them was mine, and I. I it, it was quite fun actually because we we participated with the people with people on Twitch. Uh, we made them part of the game. Uh, we asked for for names because we were like we don't know. Uh, we have no clue. Please give us some feedback. And they did, and it, it, it's what I like about uh, all of this. It's all a ping pong game, you know. And that, that's what I, I, I lived through I, in this first uh, the first convention, made a lot of contacts, uh, had a lot of fun. So when it came to, hey, we're, we're going to do a second one, uh, us in, uh, in Les Aventures, we were like, yeah, we want to do that again. Of course we will. Amazing. Uh, I, think that, that, I think, again... I think CyberConf is unique in terms of being an online convention compared to all the others I attended. Uh, Origins was cancelled. I went to Virtually Expo. I went to Acadecon. I went to Metatopia. Uh, but none of them had this 24-7 for three days ongoing stream. And it's not just about the content produced there. It's also the people in the chat room, they they fired up because they've been there all the time. Maybe they, they put it in the background as they're cooking or, or doing something like that. So yeah, the, 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 the ongoing stream is something truly amazing. But it, th there's a, wait, sorry, Mark, you wanted to add something? Well, I was just saying that that was my only convention. So I was asking, like, if you're comparing to other conventions, uh, what would you say? Is it good? It's, it's the gold but, standard, really. It's truly real? the gold standard for me, CyberConf. And and yeah, I'm planning trying to work out a way to try to encourage more transfer of expertise between online conventions, because it's been very messy. It's been very. It's like the the old west. Uh, everybody reinvents the wheel each time. Uh, there's a lot of so conventions which are physical conventions. They go online with their team and their team is not I think the strength of beyond what they, they actually deliver i think the strength of cybercom is that it's a convention which was born online and it makes it very different than having origins metatopia or virtually expo with all the goodwill they have but they have their team which is used to organize something physical they go online and it's actually a very different skill set a very different set of interests to be able to deliver something online. So people who show up, they're not really aware of what's going on in the world of streaming. They're not very aware or to run a Discord. And in CyberConf, I saw so many people with very, very high level skills. I mean, I was just telling you, Akiel, who's uh, having a very rough time now working on CyberConf, but she delivers those amazing overlays for Twitch. These are the best overlays I've seen. I think the only overlays which were as good, maybe better than that. The only one I saw was not at a convention, it was for a stream, and it's for, uh, what, RM Varsian, Varsian, I think it's called, the the, the, the person behind Godsfall, uh, who did very beautiful ones in as part of the Frost Maiden promotion for Wizards of the Coast with Frost and different stuff. But really, Akiel's overlays are amazing and the the technical side of things is amazing and 
being an ongoing live stream, I think it's it's mind blowing. And like you, I did not even enjoy. I mean, at the time to take part to any game last year, I doubt I will have any time to do so this year. And there's so much more activity going on. And uh, on that long intervention, I'm going to segue Dragon here, because who's better than Dragon to tell us what else is happening at CyberConf? You're, you're one of the guardians, if not the guardian of our calendar, Dragon, are you? So, currently, from my section, uh, as I... I would be answer also for the author con that I have listening uh, the the uh, newly for the seven month that happened during the last cyber con that was still this year we did not finish 2020 yet <laughs> so so for the activity we have four activity that happened in Friday from three to nine p.m. Uh, French hour from Paris, so uh, it would be nine to uh, nine to three for here in Quebec, or at least London and Paris is not so bad. The different uh, in time zone. Is there uh yeah. is the is the calendar available online already uh, somewhere? Can people see it I on the website? I will just uh, validate on the website of the CyberCon as soon as you. You uh, that is available. I will include the link in the description of the episode so people can go click yeah, and check it out uh, in an easier fashion. We got Alak Cocaine uh, who's uh, with mm. us uh, in the chat room. Hello. So I think it will be uh, soon that they put the calendar visible for everybody, but. That is the information that I have. We actually forgot so, to mention it's starting this Friday, so 27th of November through the 29th. Yeah. Uh, that's when you want to hit the the Twitch channel yeah. and the Discord to do all those activities. Yeah, so we have eight activity uh, on Saturday from 10 to 9 p.m. Uh, in French, uh, France, uh, Paris, uh, hour seven activity on sunday from 10 to 9 uh, p.m that is uh, also a uh, french um, for paris time zone and uh, those are activity that is not part of the live streaming but is in part of the channel on the discord uh, channel of the cybercon so that stuff for for people uh, I did not book any activity, but I'm going to have a stand, a booth, a virtual booth uh, on the Discord and people there, game designers, publishers, uh, content creators like, like Mark. Uh, some of us got signed up to have a, a booth and we'll be running the booth and running activities there. So with, with a very brushstroke dragon, what, what sort of activities are, are on offer? Is it mainly short games or other types of things? Uh, currently, the is more uh, a construct uh, animation uh, that is not a mere animation that you would find in a stand in the in a booth and many convention like the stuff but activity that usually when you see a calendar in a physical convention is those activity that show up and in the section that would uh, show up that is not part of the RPG game because sometimes it's already listed in the calendar, but some of the panel that usually you see in Comic-Con or uh, some gaming convention that about a designer that give a, a speech. Of course, uh, we, some, we did the, uh, 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 meetings to see what would fit in the calendar and what would not be a uh, real is just a uh, your sales speech of your stuff that is sadly uh, what we take care to not uh, include it because we evaluate also what uh, could uh, have a potential to maybe take one hour and not uh, something that is, yeah, you are 
those organizations, but you just uh, pitch yourself speech for one hour. So it just, nope, we have taken care of it. So a lot of meet and greets and Q&A and a bunch of uh, other, other stuff. Yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, of course. Uh, have you heard of any activity you thought was uh, interesting? Uh... Well, yeah, I like... didn't even even had the, the the time to look uh, the activities, but I can tell you that there are some activities uh, re- like that are not uh, part of the what will stream online and of the many games that will be on the Discord and that are logged right now, but uh, are available right now through the website uh, and. Um, uh, what's the name of the the place again? Uh, let me check. Uh, Convention Rollist uh, dot org. Uh, all the games are there. Uh, and oh. on top of this, yes, there are activities. I don't know any of those. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm not the one who you should talk about that. But I know there are some. So I don't know if you, uh, Dragon, you know anything about it. But if you do, go on. I can share the link or someone already shared the link on the Twitch, but uh, those, I saw the list. I did not really register and I'm not sure. Uh, I was not in the mood to just, uh, yeah, which hour is it in Quebec or something. So no, Don't worry about uh, that. Maybe, maybe I will register to something, but I will wait a little bit first. I will. So we got a just... poop. We got a potpourri of different activities by publishers and uh, and designers. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, um, yeah, uh, I I will be. For instance, I will be there. Maybe I will try to interview people there to to release later. Maybe in English. I don't know. Um, hmm. I'm planning also to have if people if designers. Uh, or just enthusiasts would like to be interviewed on the show, I will be there to take names so people can show up and we can book an interview at a later date. And uh, yeah, I will be telling about my game design work, also maybe run a, a demonstration on the fly of uh, Paris Gondo, the life saving magic of, of inventory. Are you saying convention rollist? Uh, did you mean cyberconf.org or do you mean uh, is it uh, another website, Mark? Well, actually, uh, the way you um, you uh, you go if you want to um, uh, schedule a game or to join a game as a player, uh, it's not qu- quite actually on the the, the site of the Cybercom, which oh, okay, is uh, yeah. Cybercom.com. Uh, if you go there and you uh, scroll a little bit down, uh, there's a link. For you to um, to 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 get you into one of those games, which is on a another uh, website, uh, if you're lost or whatever, on the YouTube channel of the Sibarkov, there is right now a tutorial that is in French, but still, uh, it's there. There's a total tutorial to tell you how to. Um, to to plan a game or to join one uh, with uh, all the particularities that are in the games. There are, um, like, if you go and you check the games, there are some, um, uh, you can see if there is, uh, if it's uh, for adults, for children, appropriate, appropriate for children, if there are some violence, if they will be... Um, um uh, uh some some um emotional tools that will be used to in the game uh, and and all is there like it's it's very well made uh again i didn't have time to even like participate in one of those games in the first uh off I doubt I will have time to uh, to do it again, so I can't really tell you how um, how it really really works. But uh, I know that there were a lot of games, so I know that people know how to work it. So if they do, 
you can too. And if you're lost, don't worry, because there's a channel on the Discord server of the Smackdown, which is called Je Suis Perdu. I am lost. That's because brilliant. we found that's so we useful. found that there we found that there was people there were people who knew nothing about everything <laughs> on computers, uh, especially Discord. So they were they were like there and they're like, hey, I have a game. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to click. I know nothing about all this. Can you help me? And there are people who are there to help you. And that that's a, a it, it might be a small thought, but it's something big for me. Like this this is this is very great. I really love that. Uh, that it kind really of helps and because the Discord there's such a wide offer of stuff. It makes the Discord difficult to navigate, even with for someone who's tech savvy. And uh, I know a lot of people who are who want to play more online, but they're, they're struggling. So having a room like that. It's really helpful. And also, I was really impressed to find out this year that the CyberConf is going the extra mile. And uh, I haven't heard of any other online convention doing it. We will have accessibility helpers. I'm not sure if, if it's the right term, but we will have uh, people on the Discord trained to help people with visual impairments or hearing impairments. And there are things like bots which are going to transcribe uh, live games which are run on Discord, especially for people who have hearing impairments. So th there's a lot of effort put into making the, the event accessible to uh, the widest audience that you, you could imagine. And uh, yeah, I think it's great. I hope it, it go very well and I hope it will offer an opportunity for a lot of people who haven't been able or for who it's difficult to find games online. Uh, that it will be the opportunity for them to, to play those games. I can't wait to see how this goes, to tell you the truth, because as I said before, I've worked with handicapped people uh, in my life, and to see that this kind of attention is... Like, I, I didn't even know those kind of bots were available, to yeah, tell you right, the truth, same. before the CyberConv... Uh, 2.0. They would be useful so, for me for when I run playtests, when, when I need a transcription for, for my own purpose. So, so actually, that those would be useful to me. To tell you the truth, uh, before I have played, um, in even in some of my streams, uh, in some of my actual plays, with people who weren't um, uh, not familiar, but who weren't... weren't um, uh, Allies, why is my brain not translating this in, in English? Well, you can uh, tell it in French. Ease. Yeah, they, they weren't at ease with uh, just speaking. Mm -hmm. um, they were uh, mostly um, transgender people. So uh, they were, I was like, okay, it's okay. First, there's no camera. Uh, second, if you don't want to talk, that's okay. We'll like you can just uh type on your keyboard and if this kind of bot exists for uh i don't know if it's for uh deaf or e even even if there are some uh some things for blind people too I'm not sure i if think the, so yeah we we, we were there discussing, is we were discussing uh, how character sheets would not be in jpegs but in pdf so there, there were uh, some training which happened regarding how do you make your game easier for um, a, a reading software so a software which will go through a document and read it out loud uh, for people with visual impairment impairments well so I, I can't wait to see how this goes and how easy it is to to use this because if it's easy believe me I'm going to use it because I, I I've been I've done some RPGs with people who were just typing and Sometimes it's kind of hard to follow. There, there's not the same kind of emotion, uh, you know, in a in a talk game than when people are writing. So if there is some kind of a bot that is translating it with voice, uh, maybe the emotion won't be there because the technology is not there yet. But 
it'll be a step up and i like i, I can't wait to see how this goes to tell yeah. you the truth I think it's a it's a tremendous amount of work and uh, it's it's a big endeavor. So I, for me, it's the sort of things which you probably need to work on over several editions before you, you know, you you could steam with it. But I think that the the initiative uh, is really great. Uh, is is it part of your calendar, Dragon? The the different panels, the table ronde, which uh, are are going to to happen. Are there any which caught your eye, especially? Uh, not really. So, uh, some uh, I will maybe look at what we schedule. Uh, so, well, while you look, some... I can talk about mine. I'm gonna have one about le voyage dans le temps, time travel. Uh, actually, I should have a. Uh, I'm very happy. Last minute, a panelist joined my p table. And they are from Canada. Uh, it's B Zelda from the Broadswords, so uh, who's been on my show a couple of times. So I'm I'm very very happy that they agreed to join us, and uh, I really look for that, forward to to that. So I know some uh, people talking about accessibility uh, on top of my head from the what we got. I will just put the the answer that uh, what we know already. Uh, oh yeah, I forget that we have a, a great amount of activity that is related to the Lord community. So the live action role playing uh, game. So uh, in French, sure, it would be a GN, so Grand Art Nature. That is the term you uh, use in French, in Quebec, Larping. and yeah, LARPing uh, in it's, English. It's quite fascinating. This I'm not I'm not sure about the acronym. It's LARC or, or something like that. But the idea of grandeur nature live action role playing game, but online, it it it's interesting because it starts really to merge with what is a tabletop or a story game role playing game freestyle. <laughs> and a, a live action role playing game, but online, yeah. it's it's truly really fascinating. The this sort of, of thing, I'd be very curious to join one at some point. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's it would be some uh, sorry some time. I worry. think uh, if we hear something is alarm test uh, that uh, we have here in the uh, building, so. Uh, it would be uh, some log. I'm not sure if is it just based on the online aspect with log ping or it just a uh, regular log ping uh, in the time when this was not a plague that uh, happened uh, worldwide. But yeah, that is uh, some uh, log ping uh, notion about uh, the activity. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's happening anymore, but there was a plan to stream one of those LARPs uh, uh, as part of the stream. But I, I don't know. It was very early, and I don't know if in the end it it, it, it was happening. Uh, this is the part that I'm not sure. It's Sin is maybe not in my section, so... Things are very dynamic and moving. Uh, are you aware of any table ronde panel uh, down in Quebec, uh, Mark, or any table ronde which caught your eye in terms of a, a topic? I don't know if you're aware of them. Uh, for the, the the panels in in Quebec, uh, uh, yes, I had uh, a, a a lot that I knew. Uh, I we've had a lot of cancellations, and like yesterday, so. <laughs> Me and uh, Christophe uh, Pilule Rouge uh, from the Les Aventureux podcast again. Uh, we're like, we're really trying to, uh, to turn around and to find people. Like, and uh, we, we found something to replace this. Uh, of course, uh, there will be some, uh, some panel about, um, about traveling. Uh, there are some actual plays as well uh with us um i've heard uh oh yeah there will be an actual play of final girl on Ooh. on on um 
on Sunday night. Uh, of course, when I say Sunday night, it'll be uh, on the Quebec uh, <laughs> side of it. So in France, it'll be in the morning. And, and it's the same for the uh, for United Kingdom. Um, there are uh, some... Oh, yeah, there's a panel about uh, traveling in the country, uh, in the land of the dream in Cthulhu. Oh. Uh, and there are many uh, people who will come. Some will... Uh, there's one who will talk about uh, barbarians of Lemuria. Um, uh, there's even, uh, yeah, there's, there's this guy who are, who's doing some, um, tabletop RPG vlogs on YouTube while he's driving. So he, he'll come to, to tell us about that. Is that legal? It, it, it... <laughs> that doesn't sound legal. <laughs> Well, uh, I know, I know how he does it. Actually, he uses his cell phone, and he, he just like he, when he's at a stop sign or so, or a light, he puts it there, press on record, and then like he, it's it's there. It doesn't move, and he talks to the phone while he's driving. So I don't know if you can say it's legal or not, but he, he's very famous about it. Uh, because that's what he always do and the the only time he doesn't do it in his car he does it uh, he does his vlog while uh, washing the dishes or uh, whatever uh, chores in the house but he'll, he'll come and tell us about that um, still it's it's a trip it's it's a he's moving yeah, you know, it sounds cool. It's... It sounds spontaneous, authentic is uh, what it's called on on TikTok and Instagram. That's what people crave. Uh, oh we've... yeah, I think we forget to mention that the theme for the second uh, edition of the CyberCon is Le Voyage, so traveling. Yeah. Uh, since we don't really uh, travel. Uh, except some weird people that I don't even know why they decide to just go out and just, yeah, well, well, the hash, uh, the, your, they will maybe not cover your, your insurance. So it's, if you get sick uh, somewhere else, we may not cover that. Yeah, we so travel. you know the consequence. We travel to the means of a uh, uh, role-playing game. I wanted to mention a bundle also. There's a bundle which is put there to support charities. And I'm especially proud that there should be more added to that. But there's already six uh, tabletop role-playing games in English, which are part of this bundle. So I think the bundle price Thanks. will be... Uh, people decide the price, but it will be, uh, I believe, around starting at 15 euros. So that, that would be $15 or, uh, I guess, 13 pounds, something like that. But uh, if you want to grab a digital copy of Nibiru's, The Soul Traders, uh, a game of Destiny Dream Chaser, Fragnarok Capers by uh, Craig Campbell, or Titan Effect, uh, which is a Savage World game, uh, you can grab them uh, with that bundle, which uh, I will be also including in the, the description. And uh, of course, these are only the games. So those are the six games in English, because we got 127 games in that bundle, when you include, of course, all the ones which are in French, so it's great to practice your French. And, to, and if you're already fluent with French, uh, I mean, there, there's some very big games in there. Uh, stuff like Chroniques Oubliées Contemporain. Uh, they did uh, an amazing work uh, collating all of that. Do, do you know if there's any uh, Canadian uh, game designers who have games in that bundle? Well, I know uh, I've seen Omniscience, which is... Uh which is a game that was made by Christophe, by Pile Le Rouge from oh, wow. Les Aventureurs. I've seen it there. Uh, there's a, I see here, uh, Vous êtes dans une auberge, so you are in an inn. So it's in there. Uh, uh, which is made by Ludo Mancien. Uh, um, 
touching anything else. I've seen I've seen some great names uh, as you were it was starting before. Uh, I've seen Shadowrun or Anarchy. I've seen uh, Legend des Elements, Legend of the Elements, which uh, lets you play as uh, Avatar, the last the last Airbender, and his friends. Mm. Uh, I've I've played this game. It's a very fun game. So, seriously. Uh, uh keep on rpg milvo those are french uh again but it, uh, by the way big very, names noblesse oblige uh, if anyone clicks on the the link uh, i will post actually i could post it now yes. right on top things are well done because you can filter them by language so you can have all the ones in french or all the ones in english yeah. with just a click which that's super convenient especially for me when i will be talking uh, about them uh, on the the table room uh yeah, I, I think, you know, CyberConf, I, what I find really nice, and it's funny when you tell the story, it sounds like a second thought. Uh, I find it's very nice that we finally have something which brings together French speakers from different countries and time zones. Uh, did, you, did you continue interactions in between the two CyberConf with, uh, with players from, from France or other countries thanks to CyberConf? Personally, I, I did a bit, uh, especially with uh, with Akiel and uh, Old Chad. Um, we're in the talks right now to do a um, a an actual play. I can't say uh, more about it, but we'll know more in about January. It, it, it's supposed to be something big, like a four a session at a time in the same campaign so oh, wow. uh, regrouping like uh, something like 20 uh streamers youtubers uh role players uh around the globe uh so but again in french but still i i can't say more about it now but it's it's in the it's in the talks i'm very interested in that at the moment uh, i'd like to to do more to reach out I hope on this show to have someone from uh, the Guadeloupe uh, being oh. interviewed here in English, but I'd really like to, to reach out to, uh, to French speaker from, uh, speakers from speakers from across the world. Uh, uh, Dragon, uh, I hope you don't mind me asking, uh, was French yeah. your first language? Uh, or uh, I, I don't know anything about you. So. Technically, I, I lost... Uh the one of the chinese dialect that is not one of the main ones so i don't even remember what is the name of the dialect uh and now i have so many people here oh my god <laughs> testing allowing fire allowing is so bad here we're hearing you uh you, you're not on fire so no it's it's fire alarm test oh, yeah. so it's just real oh. it's, at you least know. they did announce it but i totally forget this was it's today. really appropriate for something for people who discover cyberconf région feu is our favorite hashtag uh, on the stream so the uh what do you call that regie in, in english uh, the sunboard um, on fire or something like that <laughs> is the running, yeah, so running the, cool the technical technical team uh, the behind the camera team uh, the the yeah. team yeah uh, we we were on uh, we were quite um, because of course when there are some there is live action or live panels uh, everyone who've done it before can say that. It doesn't always go as you want. And it's the same for the first uh, Sibakonf. Uh, a lot of uh, boo-boos happened. And uh, we had to react uh, very fast uh, for that. Uh, Akiel Fire is some kind of a superhero because she has done a lot in so few time it's so few time that she had um and, and we did the same as well uh, again cancellations at the, the last minutes uh for people who are just watching it might be nothing but for us on the broadcasting side it's like oh god i gotta retouch all my freaking overlays 
because it's not only the, the photo, it's the name, the contact, your Twitter handle, uh, all this. You got to change all of that. And because you're going to probably invite someone else on the panel on the actual play, like it's okay, well, now I got to test is, 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 is camera, is microphone, how does it work? Like there's a lot of work you have to do and you guys don't see. And for you, it's just like, oh, well, you're just replacing someone with another person. Well, no, it's not only that. There's a lot of work behind that as well. There's and tremendous we... amount of work, yeah. Is that maybe now the teacher see also need to to work how to do Zoom with maybe 15, 20, 30 people who just that would be uh, in in the classroom but now they just need to mute one and just uh yeah it's just and it, yeah it's on, just on on our side is it's such a delight when you're you're the the speaker because compared to here today like i'm doing everything myself having someone so so keen and qualified behind to deal with all of that it mm -hmm. makes it makes all experience more more comfortable but you know, you know the, the little thing, the little hiccups which happen, I think that's that's what makes really the, the charm and the, that makes it what Twitch is appealing to people. I think that's something they lost on television because they, they, they don't really have live shows anymore. Even if it's live, there's a slight delay so they can cut off a, a curse word or something. Uh, it's, it still feels spontaneous and uh, you got this proximity, this intimacy of, of seeing something live. And if it... If there's a little screw up, it's like, yeah, we all laugh about it uh, in the chat room and uh, yeah, we sympathize with the technicians trying to fix it. Well, to tell you the truth, I what I've learned more uh, about streaming, I've learned it through uh, fuck ups, uh, through uh, that streamers got live, like everything was uh, not working well and they had to... They, 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 I found out that they were streaming uh, all their uh, their desktop, their computer desktop. Everything was happening live, and they were like, oh, "We gotta fix it live. It doesn't work," you know. So like, they were showing everything in OBS, and I was like, "Oh, that's how you 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 um." You, you, oh, okay. You use it all green, and then you make the green disappear. And here you use a, a GIF so it looks like it's moving or not. You're like, oh, that's how you do it. Okay. It's not you, magic. You, you don't have, <laughs> it, it, yeah. You, you don't have that kind of, uh, of, of interaction on, on TV, you know, on normal TV. But you do on Twitch, well, well on, or on live, um, live show on the internet because it's people like me and you. We're just using our computers to broadcast our things, and when go when pe when things go south, well, you see it live for real. It's not a, a big broadcasting network that will okay. We're gonna put the technical difficulties, and then we're gonna talk. No, we gotta do it right now, and that's what we did with Fortis back home in the first. Uh, in the first uh, part of it, I, I re even remember at some part that um, that's something I tried uh, on one of my segments. I was like, I, I, I want to do an actual play with you guys, one of you, like, come here. So I had to go into the overlay live while I was speaking <laughs> with people, change the overlay, change the image, change the name, change the name, the name tag, the Twitter, all of this that now? while I was doing this. Oh, the Discord uh, endo when you pop up with the the round thing that uh, appear green when you talk. I I know I know people are like they they don't want to do that. I have no uh no no fear no uh I don't care about that. Like it, it's it, for me it's fun. Like I'm showing you guys at home how I do it. And to show you that, hey, you can do it too. But make sure you have the RAM to do it. So oh, well. if you don't, have, if oh, you yeah. have a, cool. of, a of course, point, I, I a think point. some streams that uh, that don't have, they didn't have a little, a lot of RAMs or didn't have a lot of computers or big computers. 
Uh, of course, uh, it's going to be um, a lot, um, well, maybe a lot less polished, or there might be some hiccups, but still, you can do it. You can. Yeah, or you don't have maybe, the broad, maybe. you don't have the broadband like me today because I got people on Twitch complaining live that the, 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 the stream is not going very well. But that's why I record and then I put it on YouTube because there you 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 don't have the the problem as much. I'm sure we'll have a lot of hiccups for people to enjoy CyberConf 2.0. I would be very surprised if uh, if the regie was not on feu uh, again. Uh, we're running out of time. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you both. Uh, Same. Dragon, Same. Uh, what's your finishing word? Uh, do you have anything else to plug? And uh, yeah, what, what's your goodbye? And, and then we go with So, uh, for those uh, here that are uh, listening in Quebec and maybe uh, in some Canadian or Montrealer that uh, just left the country or somewhere in the world that uh, the announcement for the Festival de Reconnaissance should be uh, up there in the upcoming day. So cool. one of the Montreal convention that we have. Is it going online it's, as well? It's going online. Uh, one, of, one of the organizers of the Draconis is in uh, Les Aventureux. And um, they weren't sure at first because some of them uh, didn't know squat about online role play game. That's they played game. their first game online on Roll20 last year. <laughs> and it wasn't one of my games. And I was like, oh my God, have you used Discord before? <laughs> no. Even have, if you, you... have you used Roll20 before? No. I was like, and now they're like, okay, we're going to, we're still on confi in confinement. There's still COVID-19 out there. What do we do? We can't have this convention. No, we're going to have it online, but we know nothing about it. So <laughs> I was like, hey guys, don't worry. We'll, we'll be there. We'll like, we had some experience with this back home. We'll bring this experience with you. We probably won't be as pretty. But still, uh, it's gonna Come be on, there. Mark. Uh, you're, you're not that ugly. You you <laughs> you look alright. <laughs> well, okay, thank you. I, I'll take the compliment. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the, wh what is the website. But if you you're searching uh, Draconis Montreal Role Playing Convention, it's a French convention though, just like this Bacconf. Uh, uh, but it's the biggest tabletop rpg convention in uh in french canada there's this one if you want to have a convention about tabletop rpg in french in not only in canada but in north america this is the place to go to uh i've 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 experienced so many uh new rpgs there i've met so much friends there through dragon through, through Draconis, uh, I cannot recommend uh, recommend it more, uh, and I can't wait to see how it'll go online right now. According to the, the website, is... it seems to be February twenty eighth till March the first. Sorry, Dragon, you were about to say. Sorry for cutting you off. Technically, is uh, some people send uh, the game in English also. So, yeah, uh, the first convention did happen for this one in 2006 to uh, 2009 and after they closed for nearly a decade so they just came back 2017 uh, to the, to this year uh, through the convention here in Montreal that is organized by La Ville de Montréal the Montreal city uh, that is uh, from the library uh, system that is Montreal Jou, so Montreal Gaming or Game, so Jou, uh, the verb tense of yeah, Montreal. It, it, it's part of a, a bigger festival that is called Montreal Jou, uh, which is a Montreal play mm -hmm. in English, I think, yeah. uh, as Dragon said. And uh, to confirm what you said before, it's always the first weekend of March, always. Mm -hmm. 
So if, no. if you're wondering what are the dates, it's always that. Yeah, no, I... Technicla is the last one of the last February. one of February. Okay, yeah. all right. Thanks. I got like, apparently it's I... already you, people can already sign up or maybe book their games. Uh, or there, there's something on Warhorn. I... Dot net uh it's festival yeah, jacket it's... is 2020 february 28th march the 1st i will try to to go come run some paris gondo the life saving magic of inventoring there and maybe try to have some of the organizers on the show that that would be cool i was wondering about dragon is do you have a 24 hour stream because the french could do the night watch this this time for you uh, I, I, I'm not into the organizing uh, part of Draconis, but uh, we've suggested it. Uh, again, uh, they, I'm not sure if they are familiar with streaming or even Twitch. Uh, I mean, they, one of them, had, as I said before, had his first game on Roll20 last, last year because for the rest That's of awesome. it, all his games were in real time. In, in IRL, in real life. In, uh, in so, 2020 but, or 2019? Uh, you mean... Uh, Earlier so, this year? Or, did he play World 20 first, for the first time? Was it? Oh, in, 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 in 2020. No, this, this year. Uh, earlier yeah. this year. Uh, beginning of the summer. But uh, will it go live? If it is, I'm I'm happy to help uh, because um, I I've done it for Spackov. I I did a lot of streamings for Les Aventures or my own uh, Twitch channel, Manoc Um uh, I'm going to pro propose it for them. And as you said, this time if it's online, it'll be open for people overseas. Come and play with us, yeah. of course. And as Dragon said before, there are some tables in English. I forgot about that. The convention itself is in French, but if you're an English speaker from um, from in England and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I like this back home. Maybe I'll learn a word or two in French, but I'm not quite sure if I can join a table because you, uh, you can come in in in, uh, in Draconis there are some games in English because in the first uh, name of the convention the real the first name before it uh, for 2006 to 2008 I think or 2017 the the first name was Royal Khan so Oh. It was not the most French convention uh, it, that was, so it was not the... Uh, well, not the, 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 the okay. French the language and French the country, so you, you don't have to be Republican yeah. to speak French. <laughs> no, because, you don't. <laughs> because Royal Khan is not the... Well, Royal is still a, a word in yeah. French as well, you know, yeah. it's just not so, pronounced the same way. Royal, Royal. It reminds yeah. me... So do you know what they, uh, do you know do you know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese convention in uh, in, in Belgium? <laughs> Please don't shoot me in the head. <laughs> a royal come. <laughs> well, yeah, right. I will extend the, the invitation on the other side on the December fifth. We've got Dragon Meat here in London. Which is going online also, so it's a great opportunity for people across yeah. the Atlantic or anywhere really to come join us and play and, and celebrate. I keep trying to invite people to Dragon Meat physical convention. Uh, I was there was supposed to be a, a delegation of French designers and the delegations of Portuguese designers, which I sort of motivated to come, and then COVID happened, so it did not happen this year. But at least it's uh -huh. online, so it's easier. So in, until people can travel to London. London, uh, London, UK, not London. Uh, I think it's Ontario. <laughs> it's London also. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, okay. All right. We need me to, to go because uh, I was on the phone with yeah. my mother who's trying to reach me for some yeah. reason. <laughs> so, uh, so, Mark, what's your what's your goodbye? And uh, do you have a, a final thing to to plug? Um, 
Well, uh, if I have something to plug, it'll be uh, Les Aventureux. Why, why, right now, we're growing through some uh, some changes. We'll don't know how with how this will go uh, for the podcast. Uh, the community will still be there, though, in, uh, in Discord. Uh, for the rest of it, uh, well, if you're interested in Les Aventureux, uh, for now, we have a website, lesaventureux.com. Uh, we still have a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel, uh, Les Aventures. If we search for us, you'll find it. Uh, you won't have any problems. Uh, there's a Discord server if you want to join a, one of our, our, our games, one of our campaigns. Some of them are open table. Um, for the rest of it, well, I have a channel as well uh, on which I do some some actual play as well, some gaming, though uh, in the last couple of weeks, I even say months, uh, I wasn't really there. I do some stream, some game streaming on cell phone as well. Oh, wow. Uh, through a, a little app that's called Omelette, which is totally free. You can stream some, uh, some cell phone games, which I found very funny, uh, to tell you the truth, to, to do. And um, well, for the rest of it, good night, good day, good evening, uh, according to what time zone you're in or to uh, when you're going to listen to this. And bon aventure, good adventure. <laughs> Great. Uh, what did I want to add? Yeah. Uh, for people uh, maybe watching this from uh, Canada, anywhere in the world, I'm always very happy to have guests from all over the world. So please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, if you want to be on the microphone to tell about a project you have or anything really, uh, just your enthusiasm for tabletop pro playing game, uh, you will be very welcome uh, to to join me to do so for an hour or so like we did today. Please, uh, the thing I keep forgetting because I'm not a successful YouTuber or Twitcher, follow the channel. Oh, the button is, well, it's not a button, it's just a gift, so but you need to find the button on the FFS. <laughs> follow us on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube and leave us a little comment and a like and this sort of thing. And apparently it helps to be noticed by more enthusiasts with who to share the hobby. So thanks again, Mark and Dragon. And uh, I look forward to next Friday when we'll start uh, doing our stream. And I think we even passed the torch on somewhere late uh, 1 a.m. here in London. Uh, I will be the one uh, passing the torch to the the Quebec team so I really look forward to to that uh, on set for real well well then we'll see us again because I yeah. I've been told I'll be there Régis en feu see you yeah see you so thank you